Hey guys, this is Coach Nick from Ballistic Fighting Methods and StreetSafe101.com. We are just getting done with having Sifu Roy Harris over at Ballistic Fighting Methods over the past five days with an instructorship camp. It's been a great experience. Thank you, Sifu Roy, for taking a couple extra minutes just to have this interview with me. Um, if you can give me just a little bit of a background as far as um, your lengthy resume in martial arts for the people who may not know um, all the different stuff that you've been involved with. Um, I've been involved in uh, martial arts for uh, going on 30 years now, started in 1981 and been involved in 26 different styles. Uh, originally I started kind of like a, a, a movie. I, I started in the basement of a Chinese uh, restaurant and my first style was actually Wing Chun Kung Fu. And, uh, that was in Duluth, Minnesota. Then I moved to uh, Minneapolis and got involved with the Minnesota Calling Group and that was my introduction to, uh, to JKD. Awesome. So been around for a while. Yes. Was were you in particular looking for JKD when you went to the Minnesota College Group, or no? I was like many people. You know, all I knew was uh, was uh, Wing Chun, and so I was looking specifically for Wing Chun because Wing Chun was the ultimate art. And uh, then I got introduced to Kali and the JKD, and that really opened my perspective. And then I got introduced to Silat and Muay Thai, and. And so it was, uh, I initially went looking for Wing Chun and then found out that there was this other world of martial arts and that really uh, intrigued me. Yeah. And your journey with uh, JKD has always been obviously pretty satisfactory to you. You've been with it for 30 plus years now. Yes. So uh, you found what you're looking for in the JKD confine. Yes. Sure. Okay. Do you think, uh, I know a lot of people ask what the difference is from between mixed martial arts and JKD. And as a JKD practitioner, um, and as you, t as you say, typically we, our first response is going to the ranges that MMA does not offer, like weapons um, or mass attack or that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, what's your perspective on that? How do we differ from today's mixed martial art? Uh, I think mixed martial arts is a, a good uh, example of kind of like maybe the beginning days of JKD as far as the empty hand, the kicking, the punching, and the close quarter fighting, a bit of the ground. Um, but must be remembered that MMA, the mindset of MMA, is a sport. It has rules, it has referees, it has judges, it has promoters, it has spectators that want to be entertained, promoters that want to have money, uh, that want to make money, and so there's a whole bunch of other stuff going on in MMA. That is not the mindset in JKD. The mindset in JKD is self-preservation, and adaptation. Self-preservation against what? Self-preservation against violence. Uh, Self-preservation against a bunch of different things. And so the mindset behind the two is entirely different. One is a sport and one is about survival. Right. Living. Yeah. Big difference just start straight from the fundamental objective of it. So. And so many people think, well, aren't they the same? Yeah, on some level, they are the same as far as mixing all the different ranges, mm -hmm. but what's the ultimate goal of MMA, of an MMA fighter? Money, uh, fame, mm -hmm. um, making a name for themselves, proving themselves. Uh, whereas in JKD, it's like, you know, I don't see myself getting into a fight, but it should I be forced to confront violence, I am going to make sure that I go home to my family. Excellent. Um, the term JKD, it's kind of loosely used. Um, I know I know what it means to me, and I try to express that in my class. And it's always interesting to me um, when I find instructors like yourself at that caliber to ask you guys the same question. What does the term JKD mean to you? To me, a uh, couple of things. Number one, JKD, uh, the, the literal meaning is the way of the intercepting hand or the way of the intercepting fist. And so to me, JKD is about learning to intercept and uh, while the process of actually getting there is rather lengthy, you know, you, you train your stick, you train your knife, you train your rope, you train your handgun, your shotgun, you train your kicking, your punching, you've got all these different ranges, you pit the training methods against each other, you got your mass attack, you've got a whole bunch of different things, which are all good, but I, I think the essence for me is about having the ability, or me as a JKD practitioner, having the ability to intercept. Um, second thing is, um, because JKD is so personalized, um, the eventual goal is to have the individual practitioner have the ability to be able to adapt. 
um, so that when something is presented in front of them, they can change, they can modify, they can adapt, because we all have different personalities. Sometimes we're more, some people are more aggressive, some people are more passive, some people are taller, some people are shorter, some people are thicker. Um, and so the JKD mindset is about self-preservation, I'm sorry, about uh, having the ability to intercept, as well as eventually developing a method that works for the individual, regardless of size, shape, color, gender, uh, physical abilities, challenges. So it's really about not only um, breaking it down and simplifying, but also to personalize. Yes. And I think that's really one of the things that makes us very different than the typical martial art uh, or the traditional martial art where you just go in and you're learning the same technique and everybody does the same technique the same way, mm -hmm. straight across the board. Um, JKD was very much designed about oneself, individuality. Yes. And that's accepted. Um, so excellent. Um, if you were to say that you learned one life lesson um, specifically through the martial arts and you've got great experience in several different systems and styles and, and whatnot, what would that one lesson be for you? For me, uh, that there are very few things in life that are black and white. A lot in life is gray. You know, you ask somebody, what's the best food? Well, you ask somebody else, they'll tell you something entirely different. And so, food is gray, you know? Some people like Italian, some people like, you know, uh, Indian, some people like Chinese. Um, and so, based on my experience in the martial arts, having been involved in 26 different styles, having trained with over 40 different instructors, um, I have learned that, you know, there's a lot of similarities, there's a lot of differences, and um, I wouldn't necessarily say that this is right or that is wrong, but, you know, there are certain shades of gray that look like black, and there are certain shades of gray that look like white, and it's important to learn and know and understand these things, and uh, develop the perspective that says, I can appreciate what somebody else does, even though they're different, and what they do is different. Right. That's yeah. the chief uh, lesson I believe I've learned in my journey in martial arts. Acceptance, yes. you say, if you had to put it on one word, just acceptance. Awesome. Um, and before I let you go here, I'd like to know what is next for Sifu Roy Harris as an individual and Harris International, which is your company. Um, you know, what, what's, what's coming on? What, what can we expect from you over the next you know, three to five years, let's just say? Um, as I have watched technology grow over the years, I've seen an explosion in the iPad app world, uh, not just with iPads, but also with Androids. Um, I've seen a big explosion on the internet and also with uh, DVD sales, and so my focus over the next 10, 15, 20 years is going to be a lot more on the hands-on seminars, the hands-on instructor courses like we did this week here. Um, but also having a lot more resources online because the internet has really changed the way we do business. Absolutely. Uh, it's changed the way people learn, it's, way, it's made our world a lot smaller. And so um, one of the ways that I can reach out to a bunch of different people at the same time is through the web. And so at uh, my main two websites, RoyHarris.com and Harris-International.com, I plan on teaching all of my different instructors. So I've got the JKD instructors level one, JKD instructors level two, JKD instructors level three. I got the Filipino martial arts instructors level one, Filipino martial arts instructors level two, level two the apprentice level grappling instructors, the associate level grappling instructors, the uh, advanced grappling instructors, and then I've got level one Brazilian Jiu Jitsu instructors, level two Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. So I've got all these different category of instructors. My goal is going to be to put a ton of video up to be able to touch them, to stay in contact with them, and to help them to grow uh, at whatever level they're at. So I'm going to be putting a lot more emphasis on video. Awesome, awesome. Well, I, I really appreciate you being out here for the whole week. Um, I know everybody enjoyed spending that time with you. Um, and uh, you know, we're hoping to have you back every few months. And uh, you're always welcome back at the Ballistic Fight uh, House. And uh, I really appreciate, again, once again, for taking the time. I know we're kind of in a rush, but Appreciate that very much. Okay. Right. Hey guys, thank you very much. And uh, that's Sifu Roy Harris. And uh, we'll, we're, we'll be having him back every year, at least two to three times a year. So stay in touch. Come catch him on the next one. Thanks.